A lot of apps have something to do with data, loading data, saving data, do all the things with data. So it might be good to have a local database on your device. Let's go see how to get started with SQLite. Let's first have a quick look at what we're going to see in this video. So here you can see a very minimalistic interface uh, because you know I like my minimalistic designs where we can have a name. Um, this little checkbox is actually, it doesn't say it. I didn't add the label, but this is if you're subscribed to my channel, yes or no. Um, and then you can add that to the database. So if we do our little um, person here, person one, and we check this box, or actually I've checked them already here. So let's keep it unchecked. Um, and do I do add database, it's going to add this record to the database. And after that, it's going to retrieve all the records from that database and show it in this list view right here. And that's going what we're going to see how to implement that in this video. Now I'm showing you in this video in Visual Studio 2019 on Mac, you can see it on the left. This is just a file new exam informs template so that you can follow along and not distract it with all kinds of other stuff in this project. So you can see that on the left on the right it's running on the iOS simulator right now. But this also works in Visual Studio for Windows, you can also do this on Android because because it's exam informs so it runs cross platform, which is really cool. Now let's update the title right here. And we're going to name this SQL Lite getting started. There we go. And whenever we save this, it will update automatically on the iOS simulator also works on your physical devices. So you can iterate on your designs really, really fast, which is really cool. Um, so now we have that out of the way, I'm going to actually have to stop this project at some point. Um, it's not going to update all automatically that's coming with dotnet hot reload as well, which is really cool. Um, but for now, let's just um, go to the solution explorer. And on our shared project, so we only need to do this on our shared project. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say manage NuGet packages. And here I'm going to search for SQLite dash net dash PCL. So this is kind of confusing. Um, PCL is not something that we want to use anymore for, um, um, you know, exam forms projects, we want to use dotnet standard now and with dotnet Maui, you just want to use dotnet six. Um, but this is the name, this is the identifier that has been chosen. Um, so the PCL one back in the day when PCL was a thing. So this is just still the one that you need to um, actually use. So you know, disregard the name, just use this one at the package. And whenever that is done, um, we can leverage the power of SQL Lite and create a local database on our project. So that's very cool. Now first, let's get some plumbing um, in here. So what I'm going to do is again, go to the solution explorer, and um, open up the shared project for this time. And what I'm going to do is right click at and I'm going to add a new class right here. And I'm going to name this person. So we're just you know, we're going to have some sample data, this is going to be a public class person. Um, and we're going to add some properties to this. So let's just add public um, int ID, get set. Um, what do we want to have more public string? Um, I don't know, name get set, there we go. And maybe public string. No, let's make it a boolean boolean subscribed, because you know, maybe, maybe you're you have this channel on YouTube that you like watching. Um, and you want to subscribe to it, maybe, you know, maybe that's this channel. So um, this is a little bit of our sample data. So this is just a model that we're going to use to um, persist some data to and get some data from. Um, and what we can do here, so if you've been working with databases before, and you probably have, then you know that you have to have this kind of like unique identifier, right? So the ID is going to be our unique identifier, our primary key. Um, is that what it's named in database land? Um, and also, we want to auto increment it, right? So we don't have to think about um, we have to retrieve the latest record and do ID plus one, uh, we just want to do that automatically. So with the auto increment, we can just say, hey, database, this is our auto increment field, I want you to do that operation to get the latest record, do a plus one, and then add that to the new record. So you can very easily do that by saying primary key on here. And also, um, auto 
increment. Now it doesn't know this because I didn't do the using here. So let's do that manually using SQL Lite. There we go. And whenever I do that, you can see that it suddenly understands the primary key and the auto increment. Now you could also do this as two different attributes if that's what you you know prefer more. Um, but you can you can combine attributes by putting them together like this. So now our ID is uniquely identifying our person and it also auto increments. So, you know, that's all set. Um, now we can basically move on to um, creating a class for our database and configure some stuff there. So again, I'm going to go into my solution explorer in my shared project at new class. There we go. I'm just going to name this database. Now, if you were doing this in more of a like real world project, you probably want to have maybe some kind of repository layer in there or um, have this uh, database as a I database with an interface, you can dependency inject that into your constructors and your view models and that kind of stuff. This is just to show you how to get started with the databases, how you're going to fit this inside of your own project with your architecture. Um, that's kind of up to you. But you know, as always, if you want to know more, please let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can answer your question or make a little video about that. So here we have the database class. And what we're going to do here is private read only um, SQL light. Um, actually, let, let me add this using right here. So SQL light so we can have a little bit of IntelliSense right here. SQL light async connection. So this is the, the, the connection to the database basically. And um, let's add a little constructor as well, database. And we're going to put in the um, path here. So DB path. And because you know, the database is just a file on your file system. So we're going to pass in the file path to where to find that database. So you can also even have multiple databases that you can access basically if that's what you want. Um, and we're going to say database is new, um, whoops, new SQLite async connection with DB path. There we go. So now it knows, you know, where to find it. And we're going to say database dot create um, table. So you know, you have to create that little table before we can actually use it of person. And there we go. So I think you have a couple of flags in here, you can say, hey, do do some kind of implicit primary key to be very honest, I don't even know what all these options are. So go check out the documentation for that. Um, in implicit index, all implicit auto increment um, primary key. So you full text search, so you have full text search um, that is available here as well. So that is um, pretty amazing for this little database on your local device. So that's a couple of things that you can do, but you know, very easy. And I think this create table, um, so executes a create table if not exists. So it only does it whenever it doesn't exist yet. Um, so it's always good to do basically, so that your table, you know, that it will exist. And if it exists already, it just skips over this call and it does nothing. So it's it's a good thing to have that in here. Now, we will probably want to have a couple of methods that you know, get an actual list of people. So get list person, um, we need to add these usings right here for the task and for the list. So let's do that. And we're going to name this get people. Um, async. So we know it's an async call. Personally, I don't like the really to add the async to the methods there. But you know, it's all up to you. And we're going to say return database dot table uh, person. And we're just going to say two lists. So we're going to say, here is the whole list, all the records in the table are right here. Of course, you can also query with this, you can write your own queries in text, um, or you can use link to write some queries. Again, if you want to know more a little bit about the examples there, let me know in the comments, and I'll make something for that as well. Uh, this is just a little sample to get you started. So let's get busy with the next one Int. Um, save person async, there we go. And we're going to say person person. So this method takes a person takes an object and is going to store that in the table. And what we're going to say here is return um, database dot insert async. And I'm going to say oops, not I'm just going to say this one object. And because it knows that what type of 
object this is. This is a person, so it knows that it has to put it in the person table um, and it's going to insert it. And why is it returning an int? So that's probably like the new primary key for that person. So it's going to return that primary key so you can save that somewhere um, or you can then retrieve the record with the latest data, something like that you can do. Um, and you can, of course, inspect it if something went wrong. Um, so now we have all this in place. Um, and now we're going to actually, you know, create a property somewhere where we can reach out to the database. Now, again, this is kind of like, you know, something that depends on your architecture. I'm going to go and put this in my app object. So in the, the, the big app container, that is my app right here. Um, so that I can always kind of like reach my database from every point in the application. Um, again, depending on your architecture, that might not be the best thing to do. Um, but you know, it's one way to make it work. So let's go into our app XAML CS right here. And I'm going to create some properties, some fields here to uh, be able to reach our database from right here. So first I'm going to add a private static database database. There we go. So we have a little field for our database here and we make it static so that I can always access it basically uh, without instantiating the app right here. And I'm going to say public static. So I'm going to add a static property database database to actually retrieve it from here. And I'm going to say get um, and I'm going to make this a kind of like singleton thing. So if it already has the database object right here, I'm not going to create a new one, I'm just going to return that one. Um, so that you have one connection that is basically going each time because it's a file on the file system. So each time you have to set up that connection, um, it's going to, you know, cost some time, it's going to cost some performance. So if we have that connection already, and we can keep it open, um, then that is a little win right here. So I'm just going to say if database is no, then I'm going to say database is new database. And I'm going to specify the DB path in here. So this has to be a path to your database file or is going to create it if it isn't there already. Um, so this needs a little bit of system IO using system IO. There we go. Path dot combine. And what I'm going to do here is environment. So we have these special folders um, that also work cross platform environment.get folder path. Here we go. And you can see there's a lot of them. So we have the desktop programs. Not all of them is going to work on each platform. So mind you, um, check out the documentation for that. Um, but the one that is working is like your local, where is it? T -t 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 local application data. There we go. Um, so that is kind of like inside of your sandbox of your application. Um, so there um, it will store the database inside of your application and all the platforms can access it. Um, and we're going to name this like uh, people dot what do I call it DB three, I think or something some weird extension like that. I don't know why that is. But you know, DB three is I don't think the actual extension matters as long as the file is, you know, formatted properly. Um, so there we have it, then we have our database, it's going to create our database at like that folder in the people DB three. Um, and I think now we're just going to here outside of that if going to return database. Um, so you know, if it's null, then it's going to instantiate it the first time. But if it's not null, so it already has an instance, it's just going to return the database, or it's going to create it first, and then return the database anyway. So now we have everything in place to kind of access our database to write to the database get to the database. So now it's about time that we're going to speed up a little bit shift gears, I'm going to copy and paste some stuff um, that we have um, um, for the UI. Um, because you know, that's not the focus of this video. So I'm going to implement some UI. And we can see actually how to, um, you know, write um, records to the database and get them from the database as well. So let's quickly dive into that. Um, I'm going to go to my main page right here. So like I said, I'm going to implement this UI by copy and pasting some stuff here. So you don't have to watch me type all these things. Actually, all of this code comes from the docs at microsoft.com. So go check out the link for reference down in the video description so that you can and, um, you know, review it in more detail. Um, I'm going to paste in here a big stack layout with an entry. And actually, I tweaked the sample a little bit because here it is um, doing something with the age. So it's setting enter age, but let's quickly set this to what is it a checkbox. Um, and I'm going to set this to subscribed, because that's what I changed it to. 
uh, placeholder. I don't have a placeholder. Do I have a label or something here? Well, okay, let's just have not have a label. We know that this checkbox is going to be used for the subscribe, right? And we have a button at the database and we have this collection view label um, binding age. So this is also label subscribed. I need to change that then. Um, so this is kind of like, oh, let me actually save it and it should show up. Here we go. Um, so here we have enter name. So this is like the name of our person, right? It's going to map to that. And this checkbox is going to be like, is it subscribed? Yes or no. And then down here we have this little collection view that's going to show the records from our database that are in there right now. And this button with this button, we're actually going to add that record to the database. So you can see there is a little event here. So let's go to our main page, XAML CS. Um, and again, I will copy some code here off screen just so I don't bore you with all of that. Um, so on the appearing of this page, it's going to set the item source to the app.database.getPeopleAsync. So here we can see we are reaching into that database class here and we're getting all the people um, inside of that database. And we're doing so through our little app right here or through our static database that we've set up here. Um, so we can reach into that connection. We're going to go to people3db and then inside of that database class, we're going to return the whole list of all the records that are in there. Now for our main page, uh, the other thing we have here, the on button clicked. Um, so if null or white space, the name, then we're going to, you know, we're doing a little bit of validation here. It could definitely be more. Let me remove this H entry right here because I've removed that one. Um, and we're going to await again, app.database.save person async, and we're going to save a new person. And you can see, we don't need to specify that ID. It's going to do that automatically because, you know, it's the auto increment and the primary key one. And here it was an age, but here we have the subscribed. And I want to say, a, um, subscribe dot checked or what is it is checked there we go so we are going to add that and then our name entry text is h entry text is string empty ah okay so it's kind of resetting the form um, so let's do this and we're going to say subscribed dot is checked is false. So it resets the form um, and we can add kind of like the next person. And we're going to, you know, collection view item source. So we are going to set the reset the item source to our um, app database get people async again. So it refreshes all the records in there. Now I've made a lot of changes in code. So let me quickly stop and restart the application. Um, so we get, you know, the new get we installed, um, the code that we've implemented right here. Um, and of course, the interface with all the events that we have right now. And we should see whenever we enter the name and click that little box that we've actually subscribed. So here you can see there is already one in here because I've tried to prepare this sample a little bit. Um, so there was already one entry in the database, you caught me. Um, and here, so I'm not even subscribed to my own channel. Oh my gosh. Um, also, Gerald, let's do this. And you can see whenever I check this one, add to the database, it adds this record to the database. And you can see with the name and the checkbox. And you, dear viewer, of course, you're also going to subscribe with this checkbox, add to the database and boom, now you as a dear viewer are subscribed to my channel. And I hope that you now know how to get started with SQLite, a local database on your device. I hope this all was clear to you. So what we did is we created a little model, our person. Um, we have um, created a database class to communicate with our database file on the file system. We've set up a couple of methods to, you know, put something in there, get something out there. And we've implemented the UI to actually, you know, do our CRUD um, operation. So create, read, update, delete. Um, actually, not all of those. This should be enough to get you started with SQLite on your device, which is you know, pretty amazing. Now there's lots of other stuff to cover with SQLite and local databases. So please let me know in the comments what you want to see. Maybe I can quickly answer you with a link to more information or I will be making more videos about this as well. Because like I said, there is a lot of stuff that has to do with databases. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please click that like button. And um, if I haven't made it clear yet, I would really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel. So please check if you've clicked that subscribe subscribe button, ding that little bell to be notified of new content automatically. And I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.